In this example, we are going to look at how to solve a linear equation, but this time we see there are fractions in our equation. We have a 3 fourths, that's the coefficient on the x term on the left side of the equal sign, and then we also have a negative 1 third as a constant on the right side of the equal sign. We're going to follow basically the same steps as we followed when we were solving linear equations in the previous video, but now there's an optional step to clear the fractions first. Anytime you can do this step, you really want to take advantage of the, the ability to clear the fractions first because then what it does is it turns all your variable coefficients and all your constants into integers and we all know that we know how to work with the integers and basically what it does is it just leaves less chance to make errors when we're doing our fraction operations. This is also going to set you up for success when we start solving rational equations later on in this course. So knowing how to clear the fractions of an equation is a really helpful tool and down the road you're going to be happy that you took advantage of it. So let's take a look at how we would go about clearing the fractions. So here's our steps for solving multi-step equations. Like I said, most of the steps are the same, but now you'll notice step one says optional. Multiply to clear any fractions or decimals. So since I see fractions here, I want to take advantage of that step. So we're going to take advantage of step one. All right, so let's start here for step one. Now, before I can um, accomplish step one, I need to figure out how am I going to clear these fractions. It's not just magic. I don't just snap my fingers and they go away. I have to figure out the LCD. So I look at the denominators of the fractions. I have 3 fourths and 1 third. So my denominators are 4 and 3. So I need to know what the LCD of 4 and 3 is. Well, I know that it's 12. That's the number I use to clear the fractions. That is the number that I'm going to use to multiply by both sides of the equation. So you'll notice I'm going to write a 12 and then in parentheses I'm going to copy the left side of the equation. So I have 12 times the left side expression which is negative 2 plus 3 fourths x then I put my equal sign and then another 12 and that's going to get multiplied by the expression on the right side which is 5x minus 1 third. It's really important to wrap each expression in parentheses so you remind yourself that you're going to be distributing 12 to every single term in this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. On the left side, I'm going to distribute the 12. Now, before I do the multiplication, I'm going to show you how the 12 gets multiplied by every single term. So the 12 is going to get multiplied by the negative 2. Then I have the plus sign then the 12 is also going to get multiplied by the 3 fourths x. Now you'll notice the second time I wrote 12, I wrote it as 12 over 1. I did that because I was multiplying it by another fraction, 3 fourths. So sometimes it helps, even though 12 is an integer, it helps to write it as the fraction 12 over 1 when we're going to be multiplying it by another fraction. All right, on the right side I have to distribute the 12 also. So 12 is going to get multiplied by 5x. Then I put the minus sign and then I'm going to make 12 over 1 again and multiply by 1 third. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and do the multiplication. So 12 times negative 2 gives me negative 24. Now I'm going to do 12 over 1 times 3 fourths. I'm just going to multiply straight across and get 36 over 4x. Some of you might look at that and you can already tell that's going to become 9x. You might look at the 12 and the 4 and notice that they have a common factor of 4 and you might divide out that common factor of 4 leaving you with 9x. Um, but I'm just going to write out this in between step now so there's no question as to where the 9x comes from later on. All right, on the right side, I equal 60x because of the 12 times 5. And then again, I'm going to multiply straight across on my fractions minus 12 thirds. So let's continue with where we left off. Let's remind ourselves of our steps here. And we had just completed the step where we multiplied both sides of the equation by the LCD in order to clear the fractions. So... 
here we are. Actually, we haven't quite cleared the fractions yet, but as soon as I simplify, we will see that the fractions will be cleared and we'll only be left with integer coefficients and integer constants. So I'm going to rewrite my equation. I have negative 24, but now it's going to be plus 9x because 36 over 4 is 9, and that equals 60x minus 4 because the 12 thirds simplifies to 4. So that is the big exciting thing here. We cleared our fractions. Now I just have this nice equation with pretty integers everywhere. So not that fractions aren't pretty, but you know what I'm saying. I know you would prefer to work with integers. So here I have this equation with integers and now I can just follow the same steps that I did in the last lesson. Um, so let's continue with our steps. Two, uh, two says to simplify each side by clearing any parentheses and combining like terms. Well, I don't have any parentheses to clear. And when I look at the left side, the expression negative 24 plus 9x, that's already simplified. There's no combining there. And on the right side, the expression 60x minus 4, again, is also a simplified expression. There's no need to combine like terms. So I'm basically done with step two. Uh, let's also put a check next to step one to see our progress. So now I'm going to move on to step three. This is where I'm going to get the variable by itself. So I do need to complete step three. So the first thing I want to do is collect the variables on the same side of the equation. I'm going to choose to collect them on the right side because I want to keep my variable coefficient positive. Um, so by subtracting 9x from both sides, that allows me to keep my variable term at positive 51x. So after I subtract 9x from both sides, the left side only has the constant negative 24 remaining because the positive 9x minus 9x becomes 0x, and I don't have to write that term. And then on the right side, I get 51x because 60x minus 9x leaves me with 51x, and then I still have that minus 4. But now my x term's not isolated. I, I did put it on the right side, all the x, I collected them on the right side, but it's not isolated. I still have to add 4 to both sides to truly isolate the variable. So after I add 4, I get negative 20 on the left side, and now that equals negative 51x. So now I'm done with step 3. Moving on to step 4, now I'm just going to divide both sides by 51 in order to completely isolate the variable and also remember my goal is to get 1x. I have 51x. So in order to make that 1x, I want to divide both sides by 51. So that leaves me with negative 20 over 51 equals 1x. And more commonly, we will write negative 20 over 51 equals x. So I think I have my solution, um, but you'll notice I've only completed through step four. We don't stop until we check. So we're gonna go on the next slide and we are going to check the solution. So we are at our last step to check our solution. So if you recall from the last slide, we think our solution is x equals negative 20 over 51. I'm putting a question mark, question mark there for now um, until I am confident that that is in fact the solution. So if you recall from our previous lesson, we make a skeleton of our equation. So everywhere the x used to be in the original equation, I've replaced it with an open set of parentheses. And then inside each open set of parentheses, I am going to put this negative 20 over 51 because I believe that to be the solution. So I'm just going to enter this all on my calculator and just make sure that the left side gives me the same value as the right side. So my left expression, negative 2 plus 3 fourths times negative 20 over 51, when I enter that expression into my calculator, um, I get approximately negative 2.29. There are several more digits after that, but I'm just going to round it right now just so we can compare that we get, in fact, the same value. And then on the right side on my calculator, I'm going to enter 5 times negative 20 over 51, and then I'm going to subtract 1 third, and look at that. I get the same exact value on my calculator. So since those um, values for the left side and the right side of the equation match, I am confident that I have the correct solution of x equals negative 20 plus 51. Hope you enjoyed this lesson on clearing fractions, and I hope you start to use it in the future because you will be very happy, like I said, when we get to rational equations later on, and you will dazzle your fellow students and teachers.